Hey, my construction entrepreneurs. It's late. Shucks. 10, 10 o'clock right now. Not too late. We still moving. Um, don't mind the hole in my ceiling there. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have a guy, one of my guys gonna come over and fix it once we get unbusy, if that's such a thing. Anyway, so um right now what I'm going to cover is uh something that I, I haven't done yet. Uh, something that's not really updated um on YouTube at all. There's no recent um videos on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over um what you need how you need to fill out the original contractor's uh application from the CSLB. Okay. Uh, when you're getting your license, you have to fill out the application to get your license. Um, it is $330. That fee is non-refundable, and we're going to get into this. So let's do this here. What we do here is this here. Okay. Let's see. Share my screen with you. We'll go here. You can tell that um, I go through here quite a bit. Okay. Uh, so what I did is I just typed that in, um, CSLB um, application, original contractor application. It takes you right through it. You can kind of navigate through it with uh, the online services, you know, and you'll find that, or you just type it in the, um, you know, if you, if you miss some of that, you just type it in the search bar up here on the Contract State License Board website and you can get there as well, okay? It's not hard to find. Very first one in line here, okay? Very first one in line. Application for original contractor's license. Now, there's three options here, right? This one here, the easy fill, it allows you to fill it out online, but you have to print it out once you're done, okay? Uh, so you fill out the form online, then you print it out, then you mail it in to the CSLB. Uh, of course, you have to, you know, do your West signatures on that, and then you mail it in with the $330 fee. Usually, that's a, a check money order. Do not send cash. Um, um, there, there are crooked employees out there that will open up your letter and pocket that $330 and act like you never sent it. Okay. So um, next one here is a PDF form. PDF form allows you to just print it out. Uh, if, if, if you're somewhat computer savvy, you can actually download this PDF form, pull it back up in PDF, PDF format and fill it in on, a, on PDF format, okay? I'm not gonna go through that here on this class, but uh, if you know how to use PDF, PDF allows you to you know, fill in blanks, uh, with a lot of their uh, features, okay? Uh, this last one here is order. Now you'll see a lot of these three options on all their forms here, okay? This is new here, um, this year new. Uh, so the order is it allows you to order the form. So you can click here, enter in your information where you want them to mail this form to. Um, if you're not looking to fill it out right away, then you can have them mail, mail it mail it out to whomever you want it to and they'll get it then you can you know fill it out and send it in all right we're just going to click on the pdf one here and uh let's go into here so um a lot of this information here you 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 should read here okay and um it, it talks about the do's and don'ts with uh with this application okay um, uh, but I, what I'll just skip to, I'll skip to a lot of the important things that I feel I need to touch on when dealing with this. Okay. Um, uh, if you see here, what they say here, uh, the CSLB is generally looking for three years to have passed after a misdemeanor conviction and seven years to have passed after a felony convic conviction without further violations of law. That means that seven years for felonies and three years for misdemeanors. Now, just because uh, you're under seven or you're under three, don't let that stop you, 
okay? Uh, a lot of you have heard my story and heard how I have fought for my license, and you can do the same. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of individuals that get uh, uh, negative responses back from the board, they tend to not, you know, uh, uh, respond back. You know, that we, I think a lot of us tend to just shy away from, you know, different issues. Uh, as a construction entrepreneur, you're going to deal with tougher things than someone responding and denying you for your application. Believe me. You, it's coming. If, if, if you have the audacity to, to open up your business as a construction entrepreneur, you got a lot of negativity coming, a lot of denials coming. So don't allow the state board to just stop you because they say, hey, uh, 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 we we noticed something uh, this here or, 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 or maybe you you, uh, you left this out here or or um, or, you know, we, we see that it's been a year ago since your misdemeanor. No, explain it, fight it, uh, give them further explanation, uh, 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 let them see that you want it, you know, because all in all, you know, they, they <laughs> I, I would say, they know that you're eventually going to go out and contract. Well, if they have the resources in place to realize that and to make things happen, that's no, no, no. Uh, need to hear there. So um, you have to realize that, okay? Um, and we'll get to some of the other parts here, okay? So uh, they're very serious about making sure your errors, nothing is left incomplete, and that you're, you're, you're taking extra time to make sure everything is filled out. That's why whatever school you're with, they need to work with you on filling out this application step by step. Now, it's not difficult to fill out, but you can easily make errors and put the wrong type of information. Now, uh, the part that I'm gonna get to that's, that's really gonna count and, and really what school needs to work with you on is your worker verification. I work with my students on every worker verification. I personally write the worker verification for every application, every student that comes through the school, okay? Uh, another thing they say here at the top here, they say, uh, please be aware that there are no schools or application preparation organizations that are affiliated with our agents of CSLB, although some may have company names that are confusingly similar to CSLB. Uh, I think they're taking a shot at uh, one of the larger schools in California here, uh, which is uh, CSLS. They're right on with this, the Contract State License Board name. I think they're state C S Contractor State Licensing Schools, and uh, the board name is Contractor State um, Contractor State License Board. All right, um, as you see here, your application may return if you are if it return to you if it is uh, incomplete. Okay, uh, then you got ninety days after that date to return your application or be abandoned. Okay, void it out. Uh, leave no blank spaces, says here, okay? Um, so you, you have to understand that um, uh, what it says here it says uh, uh, your, your business name for a contractor's license must not be misleading in relation to the classification issued to the license and must be compatible with the type of business that the entity is licensed, okay? For example, it would be acceptable for ABC123 Tau to apply for, uh, it would not be acceptable for ABC123 Tau to apply for a C10 electrical contractor's license, but it would be acceptable for ABC123, I'm reading this here, I'm sorry. I didn't highlight that. I'm reading this in this section here. Okay, it would be um, 
uh, acceptable for ABC 123 construction to apply for a B general uh, contractor's license or for ABC 123 tile to apply for a C54 ceramic tile contractor's license. In addition, it would not be acceptable for a sole ownership uh, to use the word partners or incorporate it in his business name. Um, uh, a lot of times, if you're if you're following, if you don't, if you're not incorporated, uh, most likely the board is going to steer you to adding your classification trade in your name. So let's say um, uh, when I went for my C8 license, um, I tried to name my company uh, Jones Family Construction. They denied that. It was like, you got a con concrete license, you're not incorporated, you got to have concrete in your name, concrete contract in your name. So I had to go back and I named it T.A. Jones Concrete Construction or Concrete Company, something like that. So you had to have it in there, okay? Um, these are all the classifications here. Like everybody's on that. Um, Um, another thing here is, uh, uh, a lot of people ask me, it was like, Hey, I already started a corporation. I have a limited liability company, LLC. Uh, LLC is a little bit more expensive than setting up an S corp or a C corp with the state board. Um, and as you see here, these are things, if you do have an LLC and you want to try to get an LLC here, you have to get a hundred thousand dollars surety bond. Okay. Um, uh, and that's in addition to the $15,000 contractor's bond, okay? In addition to it. And um, and as you see here, is just the benefit to cover any uh, benefit, any, any uh, employee or workers damaged by LLC failure to pay wages, interest on wages, or fringe benefits, as well as other contributions. Now, the story I heard why they came up with these additional insurances here is because during the housing market, there was a lot of companies being uh, started that had LLCs in there. Now, LLC is one of the strongest corporations out there. It's, 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 much, it's much harder to pierce the corporate veil for LLC versus the S Corp and the C Corp. Now, what, what contractors were doing, they were building these houses and they were um, not paying their subs and their employees and it made it a lot harder for anyone to go after them to secure those those funds so the contractor state board has jumped in and made it a little bit harder uh, for you to get a contractor's license with an llc company and they're just creating a little bit more um a little bit more insurance on their end to make sure that they, when they do step in, they, they can pull from several different places to make sure that they pay your debt in full, okay? Uh, so you gotta do $100 million liability insurance, okay? For all LLC licenses, okay? Um, um, and that's it. Um, that, that falls under, um, um, uh, filing for LLC. All right, let's jump here. I mean, it's a lot, a lot of things here. I want to make sure uh, we'll talk about the convictions and things like that. Um, um, they give you credit for all different types of training and, and schooling. Um, but it's case by case. It, it really is. Um, they never are consistent with that. Okay. Cause everyone has different types of things that they're gets involved in. Um, let's jump down here as an owner builder. You can also get a contractor's license. Um, um, allows you to, uh, to build your own home and, and, and get a license doing that. Uh, 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 also know that once you get, uh, your, uh, once you submit your application, you will get a, uh, personal identification number, a pin, and it allows you to track your, uh, your process. You, you're going there, uh, to their, um, uh, website 
and uh, say uh, application status and then ask you for a pin. And then some application status you can look at without a secure pin, but with the pin it actually gets you a little bit more detail. So you can actually follow the process where it'll show whether they sent you acknowledgement letters, whether if they have denied something, they're seeking more information, uh, whether you, they're sending you out a test date, you know, it's very useful. You can go in there and log on at any time and, uh, and get that information there, okay? Uh, we're also gonna cover the work experience form and uh, one of the mo most important parts of this application. Okay, so um, as you see here, the, the single classification here um, is $330 and it's non-refundable, okay? And, and that's it. And the application fee for single application is non-refundable once the application has been submitted. Attach a money order or personal business certified cashier checks made payable to the CSLB. Do not send cash, okay? So uh, in this, this section one here, okay, if you're the person trying to file for your license, you will fill this section one out, okay? All this stuff here, you will fill out. The new business name, um, you don't have to have it registered. Uh, if you're unsure about your name, don't get hung up on not turning in this application if you're fully ready. Just put your name there, okay? You can always change the name later, okay? There's actually a form. Uh, and you'll see it once I click on another section. You may see it, but you'll see where the forms are at. Uh, but you can change that, that name anytime, okay? You can change the address anytime. Here you add the classification that you're going for. You only can put one license at a time, okay? You only can go for one classification at a time. Add your business mailing address, okay? If it's your home, then put your home there, all right? Um, um, if, if there's no P.O. box, then you put the street here, okay? All right? All right, so uh, depending on how you're, how you're filling out this application, if you're a sole ownership, then put that. You got a partnership, then it needs to be a registered partnership with a corporation, so you get your federal employee ID number, so you can put that there. It's an LLC, put your company there. If it's a California corporation, you put your California corporation here, okay? Pretty cut and dry. Um, if there's um, also, too, your information goes here. So this is the business entity, and then your personal information goes here, okay? Put your date of birth, social security number. They want to get personal with you. Your residential address, no P.O. boxes. Um, Previous CSL renumber, right? NA. If it's not there, you won't leave anything blank, okay? If you don't have any information on it, uh, you write NA there, okay? Uh, here, percentage of new business owned by the qualifier. You put 100% unless you have a partner, okay? If you got a partner, then 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 it may need to be listed on there. If you don't you don't have proper documentation that shows that it's actual partnership corporation with officers uh, and that, that that percentage is split up between those officers, then you put 100%. You're just a sole prop, 100%. Driver's license, number here, uh, and then you put owner. Okay, if you're owner, you put owner. Qualifying partner, you're, you're a partner. Uh, responsible manager, RME, that means you, uh, RME and uh, and a um and an RMO, which is here, okay, it's different, okay. Responsible managing member, uh, uh, member is a uh, part of a, a, I believe, an LLC or a corp. Responsible managing man, responsible managing manager. I was that on one of the LC, LLCs, a Western Rim that I created a while back. Um, uh, that's for an LLC, so you may be that as well. If you have a corporation, if it's just plain cut and dry, you're just an owner, okay? Um, uh, um, you, you definitely, if you're using um, a, a, a PDF, Adobe, you definitely want to print this out and do a West signature here. Uh, you don't want to do the, um, the actually uh, a signature that you can do on a PDF or Adobe. You want to print that out and do a West signature. 
okay? Uh, this, this, these other areas here, section four is for partners, uh, officers of the corporation, uh, their name needs to be listed on here, okay? And that's, you don't fill this out, um, your, uh, your partners fill it out, okay? Or your officers fill this out, okay? Section five, they ask you some yes or no questions. They want to know if anyone that you know has been convicted of a crime or not paid any unsatisfied judgment, liens, or claims. Uh, and, and they are trying to, anyone that's related to you, they want to know about. Uh, be honest with these yes or no questions. They're serious. Um, has anyone on this application ever been convicted? Number 11 here I'm reading. Convicted or enter into a plea of guilty. Uh, for a misdemeanor, felony, um, you be honest about this, okay? This is very, very serious, okay? Um, because your application, they send your application to the Department of Justice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, once you do your live scan fingerprinting, after your application gets accepted, they do live scan fingerprinting. And uh, once your live scan fingerprinting, you know, DOJ knows everything. And if you're caught lying, purposely lying to the CSLB, they can actually deny your application and not allow you to apply for another application for, for quite some time. You don't want to do that. So just be straight up, okay? Uh, best of my knowledge, does anyone know, I'm reading number 12 here, receive a citation from the CSLB. So you, you just got to realize, now mind you, has anyone on this application, that means that anyone that you have listed as a partner, uh, officer, this refers to anyone that's on there, okay? And and they would actually fill out one, one for themselves as well, okay? And you just got to check the box and, 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 and really just be honest about it and, and, uh, um, um, and, uh, and, and disclose that information. Okay. So, um, so anytime that there's a yes for any of these questions, you need to fill out an additional sheet, um, listening a statement of the events. If you notice here, it says, uh, if you check yes for this question, you're required to attach a statement detailing the events leading to this action. And you want to be just detailed about it. And, and I mean that you want to put uh, 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 license numbers, business names. Um, you want to put um, the year. You want to put um, uh, who's involved. Uh, you definitely want to uh, be detailed and clear about, you know, where you went wrong. And then you want to put a solution there, resolution there, like how, how you have gotten better at this, what you have learned from it, the disciplinary actions that you have faced from it. Okay. Be clear about everything. Try not to leave anything out. And we need help with that. Make sure you give us a call because things like that is what gets applications denied. You going in and just kind of generically writing some things here, thinking that that's okay. It's not. It's really based on how you word that. And you want to make sure you word it correctly so you don't get your application rejected. Once you get your application rejected, there, there's no going back. Okay. Um, um, here, tax liabilities, uh, penalties, uh, uh, they're looking for uh, uh, the BOE, Board of Legalization, where you haven't paid, uh, you may have maybe only money. Um, and this last question, number 14, is uh, answered by a qualified individual, uh, and actually, are you performing those duties there? Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. And, and you will see, once I get through with this application, you'll see like, hey, it's, it's not really that hard to do. Um, and hopefully this inspires a few of you out there to, to just get on the ball and realize like, hey, I can sign up for a school. I can fill out this application and I can get on the road to owning my own business and being a construction entrepreneur. All right, so question 15 is for armies. Uh, question 16, as you know, um, uh, the examinations uh, could be offered in, uh, you can get a translator, okay? You just have to check that question. So for you ones that are out there that's, that's not, um, you know, are not good at English very well, uh, or you have a second language or a first language or English is your second language, 
uh, they can they can provide a approved translator uh, for your test. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know that. Okay. Um, uh, this this one here, uh, complete the education and apprenticeship program. Have you went through that? Especially if you're a union, uh, you went through some type of um, uh, training. You know, this is where they're asking you to, to to label that out and list that out, so they can account for some of that towards your experience. Now, with your experience, you need to have a minimum of, of four years experience within a ten year period. Okay. So four to four years, a lot of times educational programs and definitely apprenticeship program counts toward it. Educational programs, it all depends um, and completion and where you went and things like that. Like I said, it to me has been case by case uh, and they don't credit. If you were in school for six years, they don't credit all the six years. You may get a year, you may get two years. Uh, you know, it all depends. So um and said, uh, number 18, are you licensed in another state? Check yes or no on that. Are you serving in or have previously served in the military? You know, that's uh, question 19. Um, um, question uh, 20, um, for, it's a question to be answered if only the applicant is an individual applying for sole ownership business entity, are you married to or in a domestic partnership? They want to know, okay? Uh, that's a partnership or legal union with an active duty member of the armed forces of the United States who is assigned to a duty station in California under official active duty military orders and do hold a current license in another state district or territory of the United States as a contractor in the same classification for which you're seeking license okay you write yes or no there uh pretty cut and dry as far as this information here now this here um is where it gets interesting you definitely want to pay attention to this your uh certification of work experience um you want to be clear about this uh let me see here i think they still have this here uh so if you see qualifying individuals and certifiers must be at least 18 years of older. Now, I have had some people reach out to me on my uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, have called me and says, hey, um, I'm 20 years old and I want to go for my license. Well, the board looks at, as you see here, they got 18 years older. They look at, you need to, with your work experience, you must have a minimum of four years experience right but at a, in a journeyman's level right so if you look here part two the qualifying individual must document at least four years of experience of journeyman level or higher experience in the classification for which they are applying for the experience must have been attained within the last 10 years so you can't just be in that trade okay you actually have to be at a journeyman level of higher so if you're 20 years old if you take that back four years, you were 16. Were you running work at 16? There's some people that, that was running work at 16, but you know, it's, it's, that's gonna be a little hard to, uh, to prove there, uh, but it can always work. If it's true, it's true. So don't worry about it, okay? If you've been working since you were nine, okay? Then you've been working since you were nine. Um, but it's, uh, uh, it's very hard to believe that a 16 year old was running work at, uh, at, at, at 16, at a journeyman level type experience, okay? But it's, it's, it's still there, okay? It's some people out there that has been working for quite, quite some time and running work at a young age. Some people have it, some people have it. And that's it. Don't let that discourage you, okay? But keep that in mind. Uh, definitely don't try to fudge the numbers there, okay? So work experience. Now, um, one of the things here, let, let's go back here. Uh, so there's, there's, um, let's see if they have it here. Okay, they go, they, there's about 3%. Okay, there it is right there. So um, the certification work experience 
uh, follow the application properly. It's kept in a manner of record. So they'll keep your application, uh, keep a copy uh, of the completed and assigned for your record. So don't expect them to send you a copy once, once you send it out. Make sure you keep a copy for yourself. All right, so a random 3% of applications are subject to review. An experience must be verifiable through payroll records or similar documents. CSLB staff may contact the certifier or other parties to verify experience. So uh, that's why it's very important. Now it's 3%. Now, <clears throat> now almost 90% of that 3% is self-employed uh, individuals that are going for their license, right? Now, you can have experience on uh, W-2, right, with a payroll, uh, with, with payroll checks, or you can have experience being self-employed. Now, the individuals that's going for, that, that's listing the experience as self-employed, and that's that's here on this work verification form, this is where you, you, you'll put this out here, you, you put your name here, number one, okay? Then you put the business name where your experience was gained. Or if you were self-employed, leave this space blank and check the box, okay? If you check the box, skip line three and go to line four, okay? Okay, so, and then they ask you, was the work obtained on your own property as an owner builder? Then you will select yes or no. Okay, you want to be careful when you're doing this. Okay, and we're going to get into that worker verification. Um, um, there's another form that you actually have to look up and and add to this application if you're self-employed. Okay, all right. So, um, so if you're not self-employed, you're double two W two employee. You put the license number of the company where the experience was gained here. Okay, you put the business address here, okay? Um, and then you come down here. Now, I'm a big fan of this here. In this area here, you apply the experience, okay? Your, your work experience, all in this area right here. Won't write up for me. But you put the number five, okay? Remember, the applicant journeyman level or higher time-based work in Pacific trade duties, check one. So you're full-time or you're part-time. Now, mind you, if let's say you have different companies, let's say over the years you work for 12 different companies out of that four-year period, or let's say you want to do six years, you have to fill out a different form for every company, okay? You have to fill out a different form, this form here, for each company. Now you can just copy this form again, or you can actually, there's actually a, a, a form that's by, this form is by itself, and I'll show you the link when I go back to another section, because we have to look up the, uh, the criminal and plea conviction statement form next. But you just fill out one for each one. So you don't actually have to have this one here just equal up to the four years. It's nice if you do, that's great. If you don't, then, you know, I think when I first did mine, I had three different work verification statements. When I, um, when I went from my uh, A license next, I had one. When I went from my B, I had, I think, three again, you know. Either way, um, uh, total it up, let it be part-time, full-time. Now, mind you, beware. If you do part-time, you're adding up your part-time hours. Now, the board pays attention to this, okay? And, and this is where a lot of people get in trouble is that they, they do part-time and their part-time hours don't make sense because they're totally, totaling their part-time up as if it was full-time hours. So you want to be careful how you're calculating this and make sure that uh, that time matches with the true time that you work for that company because there's a small, small chance that they can ask for further review on your application. If they ask for further review, you need to be prepared to, to present that documents. Also, too, on the side note, if you do ask for further review, make sure you contact us. We will help you fight through that. We will help you get to that next level. Don't try to tackle it on your own to where you actually get your application denied. It's not a joke. It's not a game. Once you get up to that level, 
there's a different department that, that, that sort of review your application and it goes through a different process. Allow us to handle that for you or allow your school to handle that for you, whomever you're signed up with. Okay, so next section here, I always like to add this section, section C. So you wanna add in here your uh, experience for this particular trait that you're going for. But always do this here. As you know, when anytime we're doing, anytime we're in a trade, we're always working other classification. So let's say you, if, you, if you're an uh, electrical guy, electrical guys may sometimes do drywall, may sometimes do stucco, may sometimes do framing, may sometimes, you may have to do different trades to get your work done, depending on the different type of projects you're on. Um, the reason why I say that is that you always want to try to, if, if, if anytime you're going for a license, you want to think about where you're going in the future. Okay. Right now you want your license, right? And you are like, Hey, I got work and I want to get a B license, but you always have to think about where you're going in the future. You get your, your, uh, say you get a C license, your specialty license, your electrical specialty license, but later on you may want a B license, right? And that later on may be in two years time. Okay, you may see a growth where you need to add that B license on to bring in uh, another set of work uh, to allow you to grow your company to wherever you, whatever plans and visions you have. Well, you remember you have to have four years experience. So if you took up all that four years without actually adding in a little bit of that framing, a little bit of that drywall, a little bit of these other trades within this experience here in, in this area here, then it would make it a little difficult for you to be able to piggyback into two years or three years of the four years you already submitted. So you want to make sure you word this to where you can actually piggyback off of this time to add additional classifications on, if that makes sense. If it don't, give us a call. Here at the bottom, number seven, is the person that's qualifying you fills this out, okay? Say, my relationship to your name goes here, okay? You are the qualifying individual. You are the applicant, okay? And then that person can put a contractor, employer, he's a journeyman, he's a fellow employee, union representative, foreman or supervisor, business associate, okay? Now, listen to this. A lot of people think that you have to be a licensed contractor to verify someone's experience. You don't. You can be a foreman or a supervisor to that person. You can be that person's fellow employee to verify that person's experience. You can be another journeyman. You can be their employee. You can be a contractor with a license number. Okay? They give you different options to be able to have someone sign off your experience. As long as they have seen you do the work, they're qualified to sign off on your experience. Now, the certifier's name, the person that's signing off on this experience, fill out eight and nine, okay? Their address, their phone number, their fax, their email address. Make sure this is clear, just in case you don't wanna give the board any reason to question this form, okay? And then you print it out and you actually have them Date, sign, and print. They need to have a West signature there. The bottom part is the owner builder section. So you wanna list everything that you have done. Now this is only if you're going for owner builder experience, okay? Um, you wanna list everything. They wanna know uh, past experience, your training, your education, your trades, what did you actually install, how many units, uh, uh, the name of the units, how much square feet of concrete, tile, carpet, you have to get detailed, okay, on this. Do not, do not spare, okay? If you need extra room, get another form or get a blank sheet of paper and fill it out to turn it in with this, okay? All right, so what I want to go through next, basically, that's, that's, in a nutshell, that's it. Now, if you, you have some criminal convictions, then we actually need to go to a different form here. So let's do this here, okay? We went back on the CSLB website. We're, we're back on here right now, okay? Let me make sure we're sharing, okay? 
Okay. We are, we're sharing. Okay, that's good. Okay, make sure we're sharing. So, um, so here are all where all the forms are at. Okay, you notice here this is where all their forms are at. Okay, so you got the verification of work experience. This is where you would uh, you would print that form out. You need remember if you have multiple companies that you have done work for, you want to you know print out some extra forms there or print out the one that you have. Here's another owner builder construction experience projects. Now I don't want to miss the um okay, so, uh, let's see here. We're gonna look for the um to uh disclosure. See here it is right here. So this is the disclosure statement regarding criminal and plea convictions. You want to have this on here, okay? It don't matter if it was expunged, dismissed. You need to have it here. This document must be completed by all applicants uh, who have, uh, for the license, who have committed a, a, a criminal plea and or convictions. This form shall uh, list each plea or conviction regardless of when a crime was committed or whether if it was dismissed or expunged. One form must be completed for each plea conviction report reported and all fields of this document require completion. Bill to report plea slash convictions as requested on application is considered falsification of the application and result in denial of your license. Okay. Let's pull this up here. Bad boy is hot. It's hot on the press here. So it's asking for everything. Applicant name, arresting agency, plea and conviction date, course case, court case, uh, docket number, uh, the level, misdemeanor, was a misdemeanor or felony, okay? Court name and location, violation codes. Now, uh, it continues to go down. Sentence imposed, incarceration date, parole, probation date, release date, completion date, terms and condition of parole, parole officer, parole agent, phone number, okay? It gets down, fines, restitution. Uh, it goes here, details of crime. Uh, 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 re rehabilitation efforts. So let, let me explain this to you. I did this here, okay? And when I did it, of course, it didn't have as much information here, uh, or maybe it did, and I just don't remember it, but it was pretty detailed. So if you don't have to fit everything in the boxes here that they have, okay? Uh, anytime you're discussing anything that happened in the past, you want to get very detailed in it and you want to explain it all the way through. So you want to add additional sheets to this so you can be clear about the message that you're trying to send. Okay. You make sure you're clear about the message you're trying to send. Um, some people may ask me, uh, like I get some students say, Hey, you know what? I don't remember in this information. Well, it don't matter if you don't remember it. You need to request the information. There are some of my students that have to pay to get this information. There's some that takes two months to get this information. There's some that have to dig a little bit further because it happened so long ago to get this information. Whatever you need to do, it needs to be accurate. Whatever you need to do, you need to get it. You need to figure out where, when it happened and it's somewhere on file somewhere. If you have trouble, let me know. I have a person that can actually look up anything. Okay, look up anything. So uh, this needs to be filled out and added to the original application if you have been convicted of misdemeanor or felony. They want to know. And this is the form that if you're lying about it, if you're being untruthful, uh, you will get pinged as, as falsifying your application and there's a chance for your application to get denied. Why do that? Okay, why? Why do that? Okay, all right, let's go back here. Oh, let me make sure that this was sharing. Okay, um, so let's go back here, okay? All right, so uh, what I wanna show here is, is this, this is the, the area where you would get all your forms at. And maybe I'll do some classes on some other ones here. 
uh, that may bring up some questions here. Uh, uh, see, application for replacing a qualifying individual, application for additional classification, right? If you want to add additional classification, you pull that up, send that in. Uh, removal classification from license, that must not get used a lot. Uh, application for a uh, JV license, okay? Um, asbestos, um, hazardous re uh, substance removal, uh, home improvement salesperson. Oh, that's a good one. That's a class in itself right there. So as you know, when you have a license, uh, let's say you have your buddy that, that's a partner with you, your buddy cannot sign contracts unless your buddy is an approved home improvement salesperson. Okay, cannot sign for contracts. If it's commercial work, you are, if it's commercial work and it's not a home improvement, then you need to be signing every contract. You cannot have any, any other individual sign these contracts except you, that's it. Now, once you become a registered uh, home improvement salesperson, you can actually sign contracts. You can sell those jobs and you can, sell, and you can sign on them. Now, mind you, Ultimately, you are responsible as an owner on your salespersons. You are ultimately responsible. So be careful who you hire and who you register. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to end this here. Uh, I hope, hopefully, you, you gained a lot of information here, learned a lot of information about how to fill out your uh, contract estate license application. And um, I'll let you go with that, my construction entrepreneurs. Glad you was here. Glad you paid attention. I hope this helped you. I hope this helped a lot of individuals. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And don't forget to share. If you have any questions, let us know. Give us a call. Uh, send us an email. Our information should be down below in the, uh, in the box here just below the video. So I'll see you on the next one, my construction entrepreneurs. Hustle hard. Then remember, hustle harder. See you on the next one. Thanks.